Now let's study Quincke's tube. Quincke's tube is a device used to determine the velocity of sound in a fluid. Quincke's tube, unlike the other devices, does not make use of the phenomenon of stationary waves. It simply makes use of the phenomenon of interference. But still, we'll study it here because it will help us explore the phenomena of constructive interference in an even better way. Quincke's tube, as you can see, consists of two U-tubes, this one and this one. One of the U-tubes is slightly smaller than the other U-tube, so that it fits into the other U-tube. At one end of the Quincke's tube is a candle, and on the other end, there is a tuning fork set at a certain frequency. When the tuning fork is sounded, waves are generated. One wave travels through this path, like this, and the other wave travels through this path, like this. The length of both the tubes is kept the same. So both the waves generated from the tuning fork come here at the same time after traveling the same distance. They meet at this point. Now we clearly know that if there are two waves which are completely in phase with each other, that is, which are taking the same time to cover the same distance, then both of them will definitely interfere constructively, right? For example, if this wave here is this and this wave here is this, then both of them at this point will interfere constructively to create a wave with a much larger amplitude. This is because both of them are traveling along the same path. So the phase difference between both of them is clearly zero. This constructive interference causes the candle to flicker a bit. After all, there is a disturbance created here because of the constructive interference. Constructive interference occurs when the length of the left side tube is the same as the length of the right side tube. Now, this tube here is moved slightly to the right. When that is done, the distance covered by one wave increases and the distance covered by the other wave here decreases. This is because we've increased, we've moved this tube on the right towards the right. As we do so, a greater part of the tube on the left gets exposed. So, though the length of the right tube remains the same, the length of the left tube increases and thus the length traversed by the wave on the left increases. Now, we know that if two waves interfere constructively, then their amplitudes must be in line with each other. In fact, every part of them must be in line with each other. Now, when will these waves interfere next? Obviously, after a path distance of lambda, right? Therefore, after one of the waves has travelled a distance lambda more than the other wave, they will interfere constructively again. By constructive interference, I simply mean that these waves will then again be in phase with each other. Therefore, when we move the right tube towards the right by a distance L, the wave on the left will have to travel a distance L plus L, that is 2L extra. Now we know that there will be constructive interference only when this length 2L, that is the extra distance travelled by the wave on the left, is equal to lambda, the wavelength of the wave. When that happens, the candle will flicker. So what we will do is, we will initially take down the reading when the candle flickers, when both the path lengths are equal. We will again take out the reading when the candle flickers again. We will move the tube on the right to the right until the candle starts flickering again. Once the candle starts flickering again, we will note down the reading again. The difference in the reading here will be L. And we will know that since the candle is flickering again, constructive interference is taking place again. We know that the, the path difference between two constructive interferences is lambda, as we just saw. That is why 2L will be equal to lambda. But we already know that V is equal to F lambda. V is the velocity of sound. F is the frequency of the tuning fork. And lambda, as we just found out, was 2L. This helps us determine the velocity of sound in the fluid. Isn't that simple? It is.